Great. In this part of the course, we're going to talk about clustering, which is a very pervasive machine learning problem. And through solving that clustering problem, we're going to introduce to you uh, a bunch of really useful canonical machinery that is useful in lots of different learning and inference problems uh, related to the expectation maximization algorithm or EM algorithm. In this chunk, I'm going to intuitively introduce what clustering problems are and talk about the notation that we're going to use through this part of the course and then talk about some applications that sort of motivate why uh, clustering is a useful um, tool to have in our armory. Great. So first off, what is clustering? And the idea is to produce a machine learning algorithm that can take in a data set. So below in this cartoon picture at the bottom of the slide here, you can see um, a uh, sort of fairly toy data set, which comprises these blue dots. These are our data points. So each data point here is uh, a two dimensional vector. So xn is a two dimensional vector which has a component x1 and a component x2. And uh, these will vary for each one of the n data points. Um, and the idea is to take in a set of these data points and the machine learning algorithm will then uh, be told a number of clusters that it has to find. So in this case, k equals to three clusters were chose, was chosen by the um, user. And it chunters away and then says, ah, all the points inside this black ellipsoid at the top here, uh, all of these guys are going to be assigned to K1, i.e. cluster one. These guys down here will be assigned to uh, cluster two, and these ones over here will be assigned to cluster three. Um, and broadly speaking, the algorithm has um, operated uh, in the following way. It said if two data points are near to each other, then they get assigned to the same cluster, in this case, cluster one. And if two data points are far away from each other, so this pair of data points, then they get assigned to different clusters. So nearby points get assigned to the same cluster, far away points get assigned to different clusters. Great, okay, so that's the broad idea. And we'll talk about why this and where this is useful in just a second. But before we do that, let's just carry on talking about notation. So um, just flesh it out. So here, um, I'm going to assume that we have n data points in total. So big N is total number of data points. Um, and so our data set comprises of a bunch of vectors x1 through to x big N. And this calligraphic D is the sign for data set. Each one of those uh, data points is going to be D dimensional in general. So below here, we talked about big D equaling two. They were two dimensional, but in general, we're going to allow this to be D dimensional. So higher than two dimensional or perhaps even one dimensional. And the goal of the algorithm um, in mathematical terms is, for, is to return for each data point a scalar S, which tells us which cluster the data point belongs to, the first data point belongs to, in this case for S1, and Sn tells us, S big N tells us which one the nth data point comes from. So these are going to be uh, discrete valued quantities uh, that take values uh, one through to big K. So down below here, big K was the number of clusters is equal to three. Everyone in this example had a cluster had S uh, set to one, everyone in this cluster had S equals to two, and S in, everyone in this cluster had S set equal to three. Okay, so there are N scalars that take these discrete values which indicate which cluster we come from. So notice this feels a little bit like classification in the sense that for each data point, we have to as assign it to one of K discrete values indicating which cluster it comes from. So it's a bit like classification when we have to classify each data point into one of uh, K uh, categories. However, notice that this is unsupervised now. So at training time, in this particular setup, we just get data, we just get X's, we don't get any S's at training time. The, the algorithm itself has to figure out based on notions of how similar data points are and how dissimilar they are, 
um, which one should be clustered together rather than basing its um, outputs on user-defined labels. So it's an unsupervised learning problem, no labels here or rewards. Where is clustering useful? So we're going to talk about some applications now. Um, and one really interesting application is image segmentation shown at the bottom here. So we're going to talk about image segmentation for a bit. So the task in image segmentation is to take in the pixels of an image. Um, so here are some uh, inputs here. And then for each pixel, assign it to uh, one of K uh, different categories, uh, K different clusters. And the idea is that we should be able to identify regions of the image to do with, say, the sky or background. In these case, the sky has been labeled uh, blue. Um, vegetation, perhaps, shown here. Um, foreground or objects, say this train here. Um, and ideally, we'd like, like to be able to segment it into these semantically meaningful uh, different areas in an unsupervised way. That means that a user has not provided a label for each pixel. And that's what's been shown in these examples. So in this column here, we, uh, or the Oxford Computer Vision Group, I should say, has uh, used an, a clustering algorithm that automatically takes in images and segments each pixel into one of four different clusters. Um, and the clusters were identified not from human labels, but from uh, just the statistics of, of images. And you can see it does a good job. Say, so take this Frisbee player here, it's able to automatically uh, cluster all of the pixels, uh, all the pixels belonging to the person and to the disk get assigned to a black cluster, the stuff in the background, you know, the sky gets assigned to its own cluster and vegetation similarly and so on and so forth. Um, this column here also allows you to feed in a few, a small number of hand labeled points as well and combine that with the clustering output in order to get an even more refined um, segmentation but based on a very limited number of um, labels. So this is really useful for sort of data efficient segmentation. And the approach works not just on sort of normal photos that you might encounter or take on a mobile phone, but they also work for these satellite images here. Hand labeling satellite data is a real pain. You get tons and tons of it from um, Earth orbiting satellites now, and you might want to say, um, use those satellite images to understand how the use of land changes over time in a particular geographic region. And here, the method has been used to automatically segment the satellite images into, um, again, vegetation, roads, or buildings, um, shown uh, re re respectively in green, uh, red, and gray. And it's doing you know, a reasonable job here of identifying stuff that should be buildings, uh, stuff that should be roads, and stuff that should be vegetation. And if you, again, include a few hand-labeled pixels in there from a, an overworked uh, user on say Amazon Turk or something like that. Uh, just a few of them are enough to sort of really tidy up things and make sure you get sort of crisp building edges and crisp um, identification of roads and so on and so forth. And th so this sort of thing can then get fed into say environmental research to, uh, to uh, ascertain you know, how land use in particular areas has changed over time and what the consequences that might be for the, for the environment. Um, so images is one example of where clustering is used in image segmentation. Of course, there are lots of others. A big one is community detection on, um, say, social networks, but networks more generally. So here, for example, we've taken um, uh, social network data and we pass it into a clustering algorithm. This is done by these authors down here. And we're able to sort of process um, the, the graph. So, you know, what you're like, what your friends are like, that you're connected to, what their friends are like, and so on and so forth. And from that, you can automatically identify clusters of close-knit groups or communities. And then that can be used, for instance, to understand social dynamics or for advertising purposes, and so on and so forth. So clustering doesn't have to be on the sort of the normal type of data structures we sort of think about, like vectors. It can also um, be applied to things like nodes on a graph. 
There are lots of other examples. So um, vector quantization is a really important technique where you take in a vector and then you have you want to compress it in a lossy way. And the way you're going to do that is you're going to assign each vector to one of k different canonical vectors, and you're going to pick the ones which are close that's sort of closest to to encode it. And the way that you come up with those uh, k canonical uh, vectors that you're going to use to to quantize the original vector is by clustering. Um, Clustering methods are used in analyzing crime and crime statistics or picking out uh, anomalies, for instance, in uh, spam filtering. If you want to uh, sort of detect a new type of spam that's not been seen before, a clustering algorithm is often good at sort of uh, aggregating together um, uh, sort of this novel type of uh, spam that's sort of appeared maybe for the first time and you don't have labels for it. Genetic clustering to identify subtypes of individuals with particular genetic traits or disorders. Again, you'll find clustering al algorithms all over the place. So it's completely canonical. In the next chunk, we'll talk about a first algorithm for actually performing clustering uh, called the uh, K-means algorithm.